welcome to uh, Psychological Insights. <clears throat> uh, my name is uh, Dr. Robert Hamm, uh, a psychologist here in West Hartford. Um, and uh, this is part of a series uh, uh, on a monthly uh, basis uh, discussing topics relevant to today's world in the field of psychology. Um, uh, today's uh, topic is on uh, how to find that sweet spot in relationships um, about when to confront issues with your partner and how to uh, deal with conflict um, that arises uh, at times. Um, so in my private practice, I work with uh, individuals and couples uh, and uh, in many instances, I have to deal with issues that have to do with communication and uh, how to deal with conflict in the relationship. Um, so it's a very common problem uh, that uh, many couples have. Uh, so as part of that, that uh, process of helping couples, I teach them how to communicate, um, how to listen to one another uh, with a, a method called active listening. Um, but uh, today's uh, topic uh, is not exactly on uh, that uh, exactly. It's um, want to talk about making decisions and using judgment about when to bring up issues and how, which issues uh, should be uh, brought up uh, or when should we uh, just uh, decide that uh, it's not a good time or maybe it's not a something that's worth uh, arguing about. Um, so uh, an, an analogy I like to use uh, comes from um, a physiological uh, researcher by the name of uh, Walter Hess uh, from Switzerland uh, who introduced the concept um, ergotropic versus trophotropic. <laughs> Uh, if I can say that right. And he was a physiologist who was uh, referring to this, the, um, the central nervous system um, activation versus uh, being at rest. So we have two parts of our autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Uh, and he referred to uh, the sympathetic system, which is activating and energizing as the ergotropic system the um, parasympathetic as the trophotropic or being at rest. And I like to use that analogy uh, in working with couples. A relationship works when we establish uh, balance um, so that uh, there, sometimes there is an appropriate time uh, to bring up issues. Uh, in, in those instances, uh, we know that we have to do some work on our relationship. Uh, it may not always be pleasant, but it's necessary. Uh, other times, uh, we need to rest and uh, just enjoy each other's company. <clears throat> a balance is important uh, in a relationship. Um, so if, we, uh, if we're out of balance, let's say if uh, one of the partners or both partners are dealing with conflict a lot or bringing up a lot of issues, uh, it uh, creates a lot of friction. It can wear down a relationship. Um, and some people uh, are more conflict, um, conflictual in nature. Um, other people uh, don't feel comfortable with conflict and they tend to avoid it. What I have found in my practice is they don't really, they don't have confidence. They feel that they can't communicate effectively or they're with a partner who is much more adept at arguing, talking uh, very uh, smoothly or um, just more skillful. And uh, so uh, the partner who is not as skillful at these matters often feels intimidated and hesitant to have discussions. Uh, so the, the worst thing, of course, in these instances, they clam up and they don't talk about things. And so resentments can build up uh, in those instances. So in my practice, I try to teach them uh, the skills necessary to bring things up and how to 
um, navigate their way through uh, a discussion using the active listening approach. Now, uh, put the shoe on the other foot and you're with somebody, uh, a partner, who feels intimidated or is not comfortable with conflict. You sense that something is wrong, they be, they're quiet or they may be saying things that suggest that uh, they're unhappy about something or they're tense, whatever it may be, they're showing the signs and so you bring up to your, your partner, you know, is there anything wrong? Uh, you don't seem yourself. Um, and they deny it. Uh, and what do you do in those instances? Um, well, frankly, there's not much you can do because it takes two to tango. <laughs> um, if a person is unwilling to communicate, uh, you're not going to be able to communicate with them in that, excuse me, in that instance. So I would suggest that you, in that instance, uh, share with them your observations of why you are wondering if there's something wrong. So be very specific. Uh, it seems like you um, are tense or you're kind of distracted. Uh, you have been quiet lately. Uh, so share with your partner the reasons why, rather than coming up with accusations, and this is one of the problems that many people get into, you confront your partner, they say, no, nothing's wrong. And then instead of allowing them <laughs> to say nothing's wrong or accepting, you press. You say, that's not true. It, it, something's wrong. And uh, I want to know what it is. That is only going to backfire. It's only going to make things worse. It's going to make them feel more pressured and more defensive and more fearful. Uh, so uh, I strongly uh, recommend not <laughs> pressing further in those instances, even if you strongly suspect that something is not right. So I would suggest that uh, you instead invite them to discuss and say, okay, um, I hear you. If there is something you want to bring up or if something is bothering you, I'm here to listen. I'd like to know what it is. And uh, I'm here to listen to you uh, to, because that's what we need to do, talk about our issues or if something comes up, I want to be here for you when necessary. Okay. So we would hope that that would solve the problem and your partner may feel safe enough at a time when they feel comfortable to bring it up. If not, if your partner doesn't bring things up and they constantly stuff things <laughs> under the rug, so to speak, then you've got a problem, uh, and it's time to uh, sit your partner down and discuss it, that there isn't communication in the relationship, and uh, if your partner is unable or unwilling, that you should seek help, uh, uh, preferably uh, seeking uh, uh, couples uh, counseling uh, to deal with those issues, because a relationship is not going to work <laughs> if there isn't communication. If one member of the relationship is more comfortable with conflict and the other is uh, less so, it can create tension in a relationship where neither is com comfortable. Um, so there needs to be in a relationship a, a sense of uh, balance and uh, listening to one another, finding the right time in which issues uh, to uh, bring up. Um, so I, I <clears throat> uh, help couples in trying to not only learn how to deal with conflict, but also make judgments about when issues uh, and how do we bring things up. So I have some recommendations um, uh, in that regard. Um, so with regard to uh, trying to find uh, a way to um, not create a lot of tension or to bring up uh, too much, uh, I recommend to my patients to give it some thought before you bring something up. If your partner is conflict averse, um, doesn't like a lot of discussions, um, give some thought to how important uh, that issue is. And then uh, find a way and a time to have that discussion. So you may want to talk with a friend uh, 
first uh, to run it by them and see whether this seems like it's something that's important enough to discuss uh, or uh, if you're in therapy to talk with your therapist about that. Um, in some instances, uh, it's, uh, it, um, it's finding the right time. So uh, I recommend to my patients to pay attention to what, where your partner is at the time. Uh, so if, if, if your partner is under a lot of stress, it's not a good time, of course. Uh, if uh, you find yourself um, very tentative <clears throat> uh, in bringing up something um, or not sure about, you know, when a good time would be, uh, if you feel uh, that uh, you, you might um, uh, elicit uh, an argument uh, and not wanting to do so, ask your partner when a good time would be uh, to have this discussion. Um, if you find yourself engaging in discussion and it's not going in the right direction, you find yourself losing your temper or your partner is, I think it's really important to uh, take a time out and suggest that to your partner until your emotions have settled down. Uh, sometimes um, partners feel that you're sweeping things under the rug in those instances. Uh, so it is also helpful to remind your partner that you're not doing so and suggest a time when you can reconvene uh, your discussion uh, that is uh, best for the two of you. Um, in some instances, you might find yourself uh, feeling resentful um, or uh, you're feeling... Um, sort of discouraged or emotionally detached, or you may feel that your partner is. And this, this, these are warning signs that uh, issues uh, exist that are not being dealt with. And so uh, it's important to pay attention to the signals that your partner is giving you. Again, if you're not sure uh, whether it's something that's important enough to bring up, uh, it is always helpful to give some time and thought and reflection, talking with a friend, uh, or if you're in therapy, to talk with your therapist, of course, about this before bringing it up uh, with your partner. Um, so, you know, it is a matter of finding balance. Um, there are times uh, when uh, it is important to bring up an issue. There are times when it may not be. Some issues... Some people uh, are very um, attuned to uh, concerns uh, and uh, have a tendency to engage a lot. Uh, so uh, if, if that's the case, uh, it's wise to uh, sort of follow the, um, the old adage, not, don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, so it helps to reflect and learn how to use some restraint in those instances. So you have time to think about, is this important enough? Um, so one of the things I recommend to patients in those instances, if, uh, if you're the type of person who tends to want to talk a lot about issues and your partner isn't, to ask yourself, uh, what would it be like if the shoe were on the other foot, if you were your partner and you were with someone who wanted to process things a lot? And, um, in those instances, uh, you may find yourself feeling worn out. Um, the relationship isn't fun anymore. Uh, so it helps to uh, take some time to reflect and imagine what it would be like to be your partner uh, in uh, those instances <laughs> when you're more inclined to engage in processing and discussion than your partner is. It really helps to um, reflect before bringing things up, um, whether something is important enough. Um, so I would suggest that uh, before bringing something up, uh, to give it some thought, um, have a discussion maybe with your, uh, a friend of yours or a, a therapist if you're in therapy, uh, to uh, try to uh, make that determination. Now, sometimes uh, we, you know, we all have issues and our pet peeves and whatnot. And 
it is uh, important to uh, try to uh, distinguish if something bothers us, whether it's really something about our partner or is it something about ourselves uh, that we need to deal with. So uh, in psychology, we have a term called projection. That uh, If there are issues that we have that we struggle with, sometimes we un we're unaware that we project those issues into the relationship and uh, uh, un unfortunately and unnecessarily create a lot of conflict in trying to work through things that we should work through ourselves rather than bringing it up uh, in repeatedly in a relationship uh, that can cause a relationship to wear down. Um, so it takes self-examination and reflection to be able to make that determination. Sometimes uh, in therapy, those things can be brought to light to help you in making that uh, distinction. Um, I think it's also helpful <coughs> to, um, to work on ourselves on a daily basis um, to, uh, to examine whether we live our lives the way that we want to if there are issues that are preventing us from doing so, to confront those issues. So uh, that uh, we are able to see, see our partners and our relationships with a balanced view. No relationship is perfect. Uh, and to uh, learn, if we don't already, to uh, approach our relationships with a sense of gratitude and appreciation. Um, so if we're very negative, we find small things, very uh, irritating uh, to look at ourselves and to see whether, you know, it's, there are other issues that are affecting how we see our partners that causes us to bring up a lot of small stuff. And if so, uh, to learn how to address those problems so we don't foist it into our relationships, uh, to learn to f find a more grateful uh, attitude towards life and to establish a greater degree of peace with ourselves. And that can uh, be something just as simple as learning how to be kinder to ourselves, which then carries over into our relationships. Uh, meditation often is helpful in learning how to create that sense of peace as well. Um, so uh, there are different ways uh, to help us learn how to make that distinction. When is something important enough? Uh, when is it uh, something that we need to deal with ourselves? When is it um, something that's a small matter? Some things sometimes are important enough to bring up if we find ourselves uh, feeling hurt, if we find partners are uh, not thoughtful, uh, insensitive, um, <coughs> or say things that uh, hurt. Uh, those are very important to bring up. And when you do, We'll bring it up in a non-accusatory way, but uh, to share w with your partner your feelings and what they did to find out um, whether or not you are perceiving the situation accurately or not. Um, so some, some of my patients, they, they say that, well, you know, I, I tend to hold things in and then, you know, or he holds things in and then every now and then he explodes and, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's very unpleasant and or my partner finds, you know, is put off by that and um, doesn't feel comfortable with anger. Uh, so, you know, I, I, deal, I do think that in those instances, it is important to, you know, learn how to make these distinctions between when is important, when is it not, as I, I've been talking about. Um, and uh, it also, you know, it is helpful to learn how to manage your stress in life. So often, Things that bother us in relationships are part, what our partners, the irritants that build up. Um, so sometimes our difficulties with that is as much ourselves, or maybe even more so than our partner, learning how to manage your stress um, uh, better. Um, so uh, could be uh, that you're taking on too much in life or, you, uh, or things um, are, um, uh, you take things too personally or, or, or or the resentments build up. And so it is important to learn how to take some time to reflect uh, and to uh, learn how to relax. Uh, again, uh, meditative exercises are very popular today. I teach meditation 
something called autogenic training in my practice, uh, or, or yoga classes, or exercise. All those things are important in life and should be a part of your daily routine if you have time. And if you don't have time, um, some meditation can only takes about 10 minutes. S uh, try to make the time in your life. It, uh, the payoff uh, is uh, far exceeds the s small amount of time that uh, it takes to devote uh, to these uh, daily practices. Um, so uh, in those instances, there may be, uh, if one member of the relationship is more comfortable with conflict and the other is uh, less so, it can create tension in a relationship where neither is com comfortable. Um, so there needs to be in a relationship a, a sense of uh, balance and uh, listening to one another, finding the right time in which issues uh, to uh, bring up. Um, so I, I <coughs> uh, help couples in trying to not only learn how to deal with conflict, but also make judgments about when issues uh, and how do we bring things up. So I have some recommendations um, uh, in that regard. Um, so with regard to uh, trying to find uh, a way to um, not create a lot of tension or to bring up uh, too much, uh, I recommend to my patients to give it some thought before you bring something up. If your partner is conflict averse, um, doesn't like a lot of discussions, um, give some thought to how important uh, that issue is and then uh, find a way and a time to have that discussion. So you may want to talk with a friend first uh, to run it by them and see whether this seems like it's something that's important enough to discuss. Uh, or uh, if you're in therapy, to talk with your therapist about that. Um, in some instances, uh, it's, uh, um, it's finding the right time. So uh, I recommend to my patients to pay attention to what, where your partner is at the time. Uh, so if, if, if your partner is under a lot of stress, it's not a good time, of course. Uh, if uh, you find yourself um, very tentative <coughs> uh, in bringing up something um, or not sure about you know, when a good time would be, uh, if you feel uh, that uh, you, you might um, uh, elicit uh, an argument uh, and not wanting to do so, ask your partner when a good time would be uh, to have this discussion. Um, if you find yourself engaging in discussion and it's not going in the right direction, you find yourself losing your temper or your partner is, I think it's really important to uh, take a time out and suggest that to your partner until your emotions have settled down. Uh, sometimes um, partners feel that you're sweeping things under the rug in those instances. Uh, so it is also helpful to remind your partner that you're not doing so and suggest a time when you can reconvene uh, your discussion uh, that is uh, best for the two of you. Um, in some instances, you might find yourself uh, feeling resentful um, or uh, you're feeling um, sort of discouraged or emotionally detached, or you may feel that your partner is. And this, this, these are warning signs that uh, issues uh, exist that are not being dealt with. And so uh, it's important to pay attention to the signals that your partner is giving you. Again, if you're not sure uh, whether it's something that's important enough to bring up, uh, it uh, is always helpful to give some time and thought and reflection, talking with a friend, uh, or if you're in therapy, to talk with your therapist, of course, about this before bringing it up uh, with your partner. Um, so, you know, it is a matter of finding balance 
Um, there are times uh, when uh, it is important to bring up an issue. There are times when it may not be. Some issues, some people uh, are very um, attuned to uh, concerns uh, and uh, have a tendency to engage a lot. Uh, so uh, if, if that's the case, uh, it's wise to uh, sort of follow the, um, the old adage, not, don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, so it helps to reflect and learn how to use some restraint in those instances so you have time to think about, is this important enough? Um, so one of the things I recommend to patients in those instances, if, uh, if you're the type of person who tends to want to talk a lot about issues, and your partner isn't, to ask yourself, uh, what would it be like if the shoe were on the other foot? If you were your partner and you were with someone who wanted to process things a lot. And, um, in those instances, uh, you may find yourself feeling worn out. Um, the relationship isn't fun anymore. Uh, so it helps to uh, take some time to reflect and imagine what it would be like to be your partner uh, in uh, those instances <laughs> when you're more inclined to engage in processing and discussion than your partner is. Um, if you're conflict averse, it, it may be helpful to learn how to assert yourself uh, and speak up for yourself more, um, to speak uh, more um, uh, uh, sometimes directly, um, but it always is helpful to, uh, in all instances, to be able to uh, listen to your partner uh, and uh, engage in discussion uh, with as open mind as you possibly can when dealing with uh, difficult issues in a relationship. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Again, uh, it's, uh, when dealing with conflict, it can be very challenging. It takes skill and experience to be able to manage uh, those difficult situations in any relationship. Um, and uh, it's the price we pay for uh, intimacy and closeness. We all, or most of us, uh, seek closeness in relationships because of the rewards that relationships bring. Uh, we're social creatures by nature, uh, but as with everything else in life um, that's uh, of great value, there's always a price to pay, and one of those prices is uh, dealing with conflict at times. Um, so it is so important to be able to be skilled enough uh, to be able to negotiate uh, your way through conflict and as part of that process, learning how to use good judgment about how uh, to bring things up, when to bring things up, and when is it important enough to discuss, uh, and when it might, it might be something that you uh, may, upon reflection, decide that it's uh, small stuff and uh, best that you process it on your own and, and uh, work through by yourself. So I, in my private practice, I um, work with couples uh, and families, helping them to how to communicate, how to make decisions and judgments about these matters. Um, my practice is here in West Hartford Center, uh, and um, I uh, my office is uh, uh, located uh, in, uh, locally, and, um, and I've been in practice for uh, about 35 years now. Um, so if you're interested in uh, um, uh, contacting me, um, you may call my office phone, which is uh, area code 860-236-2131. And uh, you may also uh, look into my website. Uh, my website's name is Robert Ham, uh, with two M's, phd.com, and read all about my practice. Uh, so uh, thank you for listening, 
uh, and I look forward to uh, speaking with you again in this uh, um, segment of Psychological Insights.